Welcome back to the studio. I'm Joel Landa. You're watching Songs of Freedom. And now in the studio, we have tonight's guests, uh, Zuzen and Barry Gruber. Let me read you a little bit about uh, their credentials. Zuzen is founder of Art for People. She's also an interdisciplinary artist whose talents include photography, computer graphics, installations, and fashion designing. She has exhibited her work internationally. Zuzen is an educator and a coordinator of public events as well as a recipient of grants from the National Endowment for the Arts and New York State Council of the Arts. The latter funded her mural that was permanently painted on a wall at 42nd Street in New York City across from the Port Authority bus terminal. And Barry Gruber became co-director of Universal Peace Initiative in 2005. Barry is a singer-songwriter, which means he deserves to be on Songs of Freedom and a producer whose company, Band Together Records, records music by artists who sing songs of peace, including Peace Troubadour, James Twyman, and P.F. Sloan. Barry is currently working on a documentary of PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Well, those are the credentials, but welcome to Songs of Freedom. Well, so, <laughs> does doing art for people and being a singer-songwriter qualify you or was it a good experience or um, does this lead to creating something called Universal Peace Day? What is Universal Peace Day and how did you come to do this? Well, I guess it, it did, so I could. <laughs> uh, Universal Peace Day um, actually became born I can, or developed in 1984 and it really grew out as a collective. Um, I don't know if you remember back then, there was someone by the name of uh, Marilyn Ferguson who came up with this idea of World War IV. And I was at that time the founder and director of a group called Art for the People and we were doing a lot of public events. And um, someone approached me about this particular event which was going to be on the anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima. And the concept was before you start World War III, have, make sure everyone's on your side and that would be World War IV. We didn't like the name, so we had a meeting and that's how the name became Universal Peace Day, which is really, I mean, I, the greater vision is for this to be an international event and, and people are doing this on the, you know, the day of the bombing of Hiroshima, you know, really commemorating it. So this is what we've been doing. So you've been doing this for over 20 years. Yeah. 
<laughs> the good is, have, has, has, have you seen an increase of the awareness of this? Well, it doesn't look that way in the world, does it? <laughs> <But> <laughs> right, I don't know if they're getting it yet. <laughs> it doesn't look that way. Uh, well, however, how, how has it evolved over the years? Well, it has evolved. Um, a few years ago, we uh, actually have partnered with the New York Buddhist Church and the Riverside Church. And so this is the third year that we are working with the, both churches. And we have um, actually coming up a day-long event that's going to start in Central Park and then go to the New York Buddhist Church for a candlelight ceremony and a whole other event. And then there's a silent peace walk. And then we have an evening event at the Riverside Church. So that's on Sunday, August 5th. Uh, people ask, well, why August 5th? The reason is because August 5th is August 6th in Japan. Mm -hmm. And so we make sure that we're doing it at the exact moment of the bombing. And so it has Hiroshima evolved. Bombing. The Hiroshima bombing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which... Um, uh, so anyway, that's how it all evolved, and here we are. And um, it always has its kind of its own magical development. It has a life of its own, and we have quite a number of people involved who are volunteering in the event. Uh, we have quite a number of is artists. Is there one event in New York, or is this? There's actually going to be three. You know, we're going to start at noon in Central Park, and that's going to go to five o'clock. And then at the New York Buddhist Church, actually at five thirty, they're going to be showing a film. And then at 6 o'clock, they're starting a ceremony. And at 7.15, they have the candlelight ceremony. And then there's a silent peace walk that goes from the New York Buddhist Church, which is on Riverside Drive and 105th Street, to the, um, yeah, to the Riverside Church, which is at 120th Street and uh, Riverside Drive. So uh, this year, we're having about four or five performers who are coming in from Japan as well as a survivor. Uh, we had also a number of uh, contingency from last year coming to, to Japan. So there's, uh, you know, it has grown on a very international level as far as our connection with Japan and, and working with the Japanese on this. So yeah, it's been evolving. Although, as I said, looking at the stay the mo at the world at this moment. Since 1984, a yeah. lot more countries have the capacity to use nuclear weapons. Yeah. So yeah. what is your message to those countries who are considering uh, getting involved in this? Well, what we say is the purpose of our event, the mission, is to transform a remembrance of horror into a rededication to life. And what we're saying is that we don't agree with this whole development of, uh, obviously, what's going on in the world, what's going on in Iraq, what's going on in the development in all these countries. Um, and I guess that's why, you know, my t-shirt says power to the peaceful. It's no longer about power to the pe people. The people haven't been doing a very great mm -hmm. job, but I think it's time for the peaceful mm -hmm. people to come together and really unite and see about us making some changes. Barry, how did you get involved with this? I started in 1984 as a performer. I actually had a song called World War IV, and um, I performed in 84, I think, in 85, and maybe on and off throughout the years. And in 2005, which was the 20th anniversary... 60th. 60th, I'm sorry, 60th, that's right, anniversary of the uh, bombing of Hiroshima, Suzanne came and said, well, maybe it's time to resurrect Universal Peace Day. And um, she asked me if I wanted to help her put it together. So I helped that year, I helped last year, and this is actually my third year being co-director of the event. He's doing more than just helping. <laughs> it's like, it's really a collaboration, you know.